record. Got it. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the November 9th, November 10th uh, Chaos Metrics Model meeting. It's good yeah. to have everybody here. Um, <laughs> I just I wanted to give you just a real quick update. So Sean and I were at the member summit last week. And you know, I think there was a lot of interest. At least I picked it up, Sean. I don't know about yeah. you, but a lot of interest on metrics models. I think there people is. People are starting to see the utility uh, of these models more than just individual metrics. So I just, I just want to reinforce that I think it's really good work that we're doing here. I don't know, Sean, if you kind of picked that up too. I, I did. I mean, I think, I think a lot of the people who are putting metrics together at different open source driven companies are are kind of doing metric models in practice. And this is a way of codifying these, these ways that people are applying the metrics in, in reality. And for, I think providing like another layer of usefulness uh, at, at the chaos project level. So yeah, I think people are pretty excited about this. Cool. Like it's, what do I do about it? But it, it seems more immediately understandable and useful than the discrete metrics, although they're, in, they're necessary foundation. So. The next stage of our evolution. Yeah, so cool. Um, so great. I just it was mostly just a comment from Sean mm -hmm. and myself to reinforce <laughs> this is a good group of people. Yeah, got a good, uh, good, and good, uh, good work, everybody. Um, so while I have Sean and Ragava on the line, um, so one of the things that we're taking a look at is how to actually deploy the metrics models. So we, we'll get back to the, the kind of building out new metrics models. But one of the things that we're taking a look at is how deployable these are in a tool like Augur. So Sean and Ragava, do you wanna talk about kind of what's what's going on there? Hi, Lucas. I, th I, think, I think the short summary is that Ragava and I are looking at a metrics model that Elizabeth put together. Yeah, yes. And using Augur data to um, realize that model in practice. Okay, how's that going? Um, I think we're getting started. So I think you know, Ragava is learning where the data is in Augur and I'm looking at some examples. And okay. um, we didn't check in last week because I was at Member Summit. So Ragava, can I speak to that more than I can right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just went through Elizabeth model like uh, uh, Sean, you updated in the Word document, the API endpoints. I just fetched all the data and I was just analyzing that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sean, could you explain a little bit uh, what means of deployment uh, metrics model? Um, so we have a, a framework in in the Augur project or in the chaos project, it's the Augur um, community reports repository, Augur Dex community yeah, yeah, yeah. reports. I know, I know that. Yeah. And so um, Ragaba is taking a, and I don't know if you have a handy link to the particular metrics model that we're working on, but it's one that Elizabeth put together. Um, and we're using uh, the endpoints that Augur already has deployed for these metrics to, to bring the discrete metrics that are part of the model into a single Jupyter notebook. And then we are gonna dream up ways of making that metrics model, model uh, digestible. So I think the creative part will be, what are the right visualizations? What are the right ways to describe these things? And, and that's, I think that is more of a, a process of creation than it is a process of definition. Uh, we kind of have to think through what is that metrics model what, what, what does it need to look like for it to be digestible? And probably um, one, one good approach would be to maybe set as a target, have a, a few candidate ideas, even if they're not driven by the data, but just by design ideas that um, mm -hmm. we can present for next time, Regava. Yes, um, yes, definitely, Sean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Super interesting. Yeah. And, and, you know, whether or not we have the actual data or not, that, that will just, I mean, I have it in my head that everything is already in Augur, but I think when uh, Gav and I go to do the work, we, we may find we need to add something or 
it's not shaped quite the way it needs to be and we need to reshape it so so how would would do you kind of envision this sean as like making a notebook available yeah right now i think yeah. it starts with making a notebook available uh, okay and then i, I think that i think the the utility of the notebook is if it's well it starts, I think, I think it starts by making a notebook available and it'll start with auger data, but in the, in the perfect, in a perfect world, um, the concepts and the, the design will be abstractable and usable, for, you know, from other data sources, because you can get the data that auger has in a myriad of myriad of ways. Um, and so the fact that we're using auger endpoints that shape data in a certain way, um, means that other endpoints from other tools could shape data in the same way and just use those notebooks in theory. Um, I think okay. that I think making that sort of real and flexible, uh, we're just going to aim for a proof of concept right now. But th I think the long term vision is, is that that in some form that these metrics models become concretely consumable mm -hmm. on a shared basis, even if it's just against um, example data that's driven from Augur, I think it can, I think it can be part of a creative process of how do we, because I think we haven't gotten to how do we express the metric models in a way that people can consume. And that's, that's the problem space that I think Ragava is helping us with right now. Yes. It, it would be great that uh, we can say some demo of the Augur deployment, maybe next week, um, sorry, maybe next meeting. Huh? Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think, yeah, uh, Regava, that's our target now. So yeah. that's great. <laughs> we, just, we just signed up for stuff. Yes, yeah, so I'll put a big action item. <laughs> so congratulations on showing up for the meeting, Regava. <laughs> Do what you want. Do this. <laughs> Regava, no, um, buy it. Oh, yeah. AI. <laughs> I suppose I should put. Yeah, give it put names by it. Otherwise, it's just a inaction item. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I did have a question. Oh, I was thinking too. This could probably it would make sense. You know how in the metrics models that we have, um, one of our headers is implementation. I think I think that's one of the it's like in practice or something like that because we yes. point yes. you know what I'm talking about yes I'm thinking we can just point to the Jupyter notebooks that would be so bad I I I think we could do that because Regav and I'll be using like a there's a few perpetually available Augur instances that are like have, just have chaos data in them that that can be used as example data that don't so really I'm gonna, intellectual kind property. of express my naivete but like if, if you're providing a notebook to somebody is that ultimately just a something that's deployable and like how how, how do i so so I, so I see the notebook right right and then then like what do i do with that so as a so as a practical matter the first iteration of this will be tightly coupled with an instance of auger that has the data that okay. the notebook is accessing Okay. Uh, I and think that'll just be publicly available. Yeah. Yeah. There, these the API endpoints are already publicly available, and so we'll just be trying to use them in a way that we haven't before. Okay. Um, and we may we may determine we need to create a couple new ones um, as we work through the process, which I can do for Regava. Uh, okay. Uh, and I, I look at probably like Regava, and I need to do two things. One is evaluate the data that we have and the, what we think the metrics model is and then in like come up with a design concept that we want to present and okay and so i think i think it's a design activity more okay uh, what do you think Regava? yeah sean i agree with that yeah it, it is more of a design uh, uh more of a visualization we have to be with the what uh, data is there and, and in an ideal world, in, in two weeks, we have like a working version of it with real data. That's that's the goal. And 
if, if we don't, we'll at least have a design for what it'll look like when we have the exact real data that we actually determine we need. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would like you, Hui, I would love to see this in two weeks. Like, yeah. like not done, but it would just help me. Yeah, it's brain. it's yeah, too abstract. Brain. It's too abstract right yeah. now. And I think I think it's abstract for Regava and I. Um okay. Like we know, we know that it, we know that it's not like the technical work is kind of done. That this is really a user data design problem. User experience kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The met, you know, Elizabeth put together a very thoughtful metrics model. I actually don't remember which one it is. Um, it's in the notes. It's right there. Okay. okay. Inclusive leadership. I have a suggestion for that. Uh, like, if you're doing it and like and presenting it to the community, maybe think of a, a, a Google Colab where you can put the Jupyter notebook. Since you're using the API, you're not uh, directly accessing the data. So you can just share it that uh, collab with everyone and people can even play with it. Oh, is that a platform for deploying Jupyter Notebooks publicly? Yes, from Google and you don't need your resources. You can access the API, install the libraries, run it and you're good to go. And if I need to tweak as a collaborator, I can do that. It's Does it work? It's, it's, is this basically just a technical backend add-on to a Jupyter Notebook? It's that like Jupyter it Notebook up. running on uh, Google's server and okay. giving access to everyone like a Google Doc. Okay. Um, let's let's um, maybe you can see if uh, you can show Regava how to do that. <laughs> yep. Regava and I will fall back on what we know works and go to and get that done second. But if you can help Regava um, get that put in place, Vinod, then I. Uh, we can, I mean, certainly that, I like that idea of a deployment yes, better conceptually. Uh, I just, I don't want to layer too many pieces on so, top of what we just signed up for. I'm going down the conceptual <laughs> hole yep. right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm no, not we're, saying <laughs> anything other than, you just develop the Jupyter Notebook, uh, like Jupyter Notebook code, whatever you have, uh, uh, Python, and I'll help him deploy it in that before the testing. It'll be just okay. that easy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm I'm 100 in favor of that, Just, you know, letting people interact like that. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, Sean, thank you, Riyava, and thank you, Vinod, thank you. for <laughs> for joining. Yeah. Like, you put your put name you on have, there. Oh, definitely add Vinod to the action item name list now. Sean he stepped in it. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad for you. All right. <laughs> Um, that's great. I think just sort of seeing any steps forward, like would help me a lot. And I think it would help everybody. So yeah, cool. thank you. No, I mean, and that was conceptually the, like a mental, like twist that Ragava and I had to deal with when we were like, okay, now how do we make this real? So, and okay. the fact that that was a problem that we thought needed to be solved means it's worth doing. And I, again, I think this, this then goes back to the member summit all that comment like people are like oh yay like something deployable like right you know just like age of a pull request <laughs> like alone that doesn't mean a whole lot but collectively right. it starts to have an impact all right cool um the next thing on the the agenda here the community reports metric model Can you scroll down a little bit sean yes. nice keep going just under the highlighted there you go oh okay so this had come up last time um, that we develop a, and I'm glad you're here, Sean, that you, we develop a metrics model based on our community report. And this was, if you recall, I think this was Elizabeth's comment that was along the lines of like, maybe somebody just wants kind of a high level overview of, of their community work. Do you remember that comment yeah. at all? Yeah, so this is this is taking the, or the I'm sorry, the, the chaos community reports that we had previously delivered uh, and and making them into a, a sort of a metrics model. Yeah, exactly. And this would be like, I don't know, the model name could be like community overview or something like that. You know what I mean? Just a high level look at kind of what's going on. Yeah. Um, there were first, a few. Oh, go ahead, glance. Sean. First glance. First, yeah, exactly. First glance metrics model. Right? I like yeah. that. 
Um, so there were a few a few issues though that came of this. So the way that we've been building metrics models to date is that we've been using existing chaos metrics and um, like using those to build the models, not not the okay, I think isn't that the acronym approach? Not not the backronym approach where we have the model and then we right you know, we're, it, we're, you know it's a directional thing. So there are there are cases. For example, where I, I guess we it sounds like we have not defined the local time zone as part of the I commits. think so. So like commits, mm -hmm. I actually don't I know there was a big discussion on commits, Sean, but I don't mm -hmm. think we actually have a metric on commits, to be we, honest. No, with we you. we do. We we have a yeah. we, we it's yeah, it's called code commit. It's called code something changes. Code, code changes. changes. Right. Yeah. And so code and okay. so the evolution working group is actually going to push out calling them code changes commits <laughs> because they're Wait, what's happening the, the evolution working group is going to add commits to the existing name um okay sort of as reverse compatibility uh, with our obsession for some reason of not using the term commit initially <laughs> um right and the fact that this is what we're talking about is commits and so it's a little confusing when you see code changes like how what is that well it's a commit why don't you call okay. it that it's a long story <laughs> so code changes okay got it and then i guess one of the things for you sean is if i i mean i can start building out this metrics model but i was kind of wondering because you had done so for a lot of people that don't know, we had built metrics you've, models. I don't know how I scroll down, but you've just, yeah, you've designed, this is already designed, like. I just want to make sure this is what you were using, basically. You see what I'm saying? So I took yeah. what I thought was the best, like the closest metric mm -hmm. for the he's, thing. He's, yeah. But I wanted to make sure that you weren't engineering something slightly different then these, no these are these are the people in the neighborhood the, these okay. are the things that, uh, and so some of these actually have i mean this makes it easier so the way the community reports metric model was conceptualized was it was essentially a series of reports on discrete metrics that together told a story and and so like auger built some visualization endpoints that actually brought to like the fly the flyby and repeat contributor counts per month, for example. That that's actually contributor data combined with the things that the contributors did, like commits and comments and all of the various kinds of activities that someone can perform in a repo. And so that is an, it's it's actually an integration of several metrics, the flyby and contributor counts per month. So it would be like a, co a combination of contributors and contributions. Uh, sliced by month contributors and contributions like code right. changes so, so we included in the in the initial auger community report six six types of activity commits issue creation pull request creation and then commenting on all the same um, okay so like new issues maybe right new issues mm -hmm. I'm just going to capture these. This is why I wanted to talk through this just a little bit with you. And I would have to go back and look to remember quite exactly what it was, but it inc included like new issues. It included um, new com PR. Com yeah, new PRs, uh, new commits, and then comments on issues and comments on pull requests. There was a sixth activity, which uh, escapes me right now. I can go back and look. Okay, we have change requests. Yep, which are yeah, change requests. Do we have any metrics to to measure that if these issues is uh, active or supported, uh, fully supported by by people uh, in the community? I mean. If there are more than one or two comments around this issue, or there is only one response to to show that if this issue it's a uh, it's a uh, attract the most attention from people. So this is right. Person. So for the right. flyby and repeat contributors, we were explicitly teasing out people who 
came in and made a single contribution and then didn't make a subsequent one and people who were repeat contributors. So there was a, a separation of those. And right now I'm sort of looking, I'm trying to look up. But I don't think to the Yahoo's question, I don't think we have a metric. I don't think we've ever talked about one. And I think this is what you're talking about, Yuhui, like issues that are posted, but just kind of sit there with no activity versus yeah. issues that generate like 75 different comments that are highly active and engaging. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah. Because okay. of some, yeah, base set. Sean, did you have a comment? Nope. Sean, go ahead. No, I think he has no comment, Yuhui. I have no comment. Right. <laughs> okay. Because I, I mean, we found that a lot of call, uh, issue pop up uh, in our communities, but uh, some of them are less of the support. We have to no, figure I, out I what's the reading. Yeah. I agree. Um, no, we don't have a metric for that. So, yeah. Nice okay. Goal. We can think about it. Okay. Um, actually, that would be a good evolution metric. Okay, so Sean, this is helpful. Thank you. Sure. Or the, was there anything else that you were going to add in here? Or um, I have to add one gonna... comment slide on that on that report metrics model. Actually, I think most of the community already using this metrics model, right? In practice, they're using some form yeah, of metrics in practice. model. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one example of the. We we still have drive by apparently on some of these. <laughs> uh -huh. But this is, so it wouldn't be all of them, but we have like a visualization endpoint that all first time contributors per quarter, all repeat first time contributors per quarter, drive by first time contributors and second time contributors. And there's a there's a caption for each. And so in some cases, because of the prior efforts to create these um, standardized community reports, we have pulled together um, metrics that 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 visualize things like this just automatically. So it's like you don't have to build anything. It's just a it's just a visualization endpoint. That's helpful because those are the those are the metrics that you were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Let Can me, you let, also I'm gonna put that link up. in here? Yeah, please do. And can you also open the chat real fast? Oh, yeah, if I can. The Zoom chat. Vinod put the actual community report in there just for folks to get a. Sorry, when I'm sharing, all my controls are in weird places. Oh, there they are. Okay, sorry. It's. it's You're fine. It's, it's. Yeah. There. Just that's the. Okay. This is what it was. So. Um, part of it was generated. Um, so I like in some cases, uh, for example, there wasn't, we did it, we have a heat map visualization of uh, mean duration of pull requests. Well, if there aren't very many pull requests on a repo, um, the heat map is sort of meaningless. Um, it's, it's a visualization intended for high volume projects and whatever. Actually, just go back, have. go back, go up, go back okay. in the repo. No, just go up in that repo oh, oh right right okay you just go to sample reports yep and click on salt yeah salt stack's pretty active yeah that one would have the heat map yep yep okay okay so they're basically um, the, part... the, the blue in the heat map means they're closing them faster and the red means they're closing them slower uh-huh interesting I mean, for high, yeah, for high. So some, so some of these reports are more or less useful depending on the volume of activity in a community. Um, that you know, so a smaller community may use different metrics. Well, I think the the intention of like this metrics model and this community report, if they're kind of the same, mm -hmm. it was like, um, it's just like it. It's to get people that want to know more, yeah. if you recall. Like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, like I want to know more. <laughs> what, are, what are these chaos metrics you speak of, strange chaos people? Yes, and then you see these and you're like, well, how do I understand 
whatever X Y Z. You know, that's not visual. That's not here. You know what I yeah, mean? So I think that was exactly. the intention of these reports. Okay. All right. And um, great. somewhere along the way, I've lost. I don't know if I I clicked. Go away. Yeah, I lost the link to the document. I guess it. Uh, let me, I just scroll up. Did you lose the actual minutes? I got I got them back. Thanks to the miracle of uh, Zoom chat. That's great. All right, so I, I put it all in caps. I'm going to build that out. I'm not sure why I used caps, but I'll I'll start building that out. Um, Let's put that okay, so then in PDF in there because it's probably a useful reference to keep in context. Oh, thank you. Is that the old report? Yeah, that's the salt stack report we just looked at. I will. I have a really hard time if my cursor is right up against another letter. Yeah. I have a hard time typing. You know what I'm talking about? I do. I do, especially if that's <laughs> a it's a a linked letter into a I just URL. Can't, my brain just can't quite. <laughs> I make up. I back up better. and add a space because I can't deal with it. I do too. All right. Um, all right, I had a question um, for folks here as we're kind of getting into our metrics models that I think are getting pretty close to release. Um, so it's kind of this this bottom thing. So I think last time, if you click on any of these, Sean, could you kind of yeah, click on? Them? Sure, like this one. Maybe here. like all of them. Yeah, oh, like, that's, oh, the one okay. that, that's the one that uh, Lucas open was working on. Yep. And then can you click on just yep. open all of them? There is a new version of that for what it's worth. Oh, can um, you put it in the chat or somewhere? Or in the dot, just replace it and I can, or add it. Give me the new version, yeah. So I guess selecting like. I was just going off the old, uh, old minute, Lucas. Thanks. Close this one. So this is the current version, Lucas. You just put it in the chat, yeah. I, I think I opened it. I was just confirming I clicked the correct link. Okay. I just closed myself out of the minutes by accident. So Matt, was your intention to kind of talk through some of these? Uh, well, yeah. What did I just do? Oh, hold on. I, 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 hold on. I closed myself out of the minutes, and then I went to the wrong minutes. I'm coming. Well, so I guess maybe I had, did you update Lucas's here? I did. I think so. That, Lucas, did I, did, am I looking at the right link? So uh, this is the correct item. Correct form. Let me yes. get it out of here. Oops. Hold on. I'm just updating it. Do you want to walk us through it, Lucas, or? Yeah, sure. Um, so I um, reset the format. Um, of this without making any kind of meaning level changes, um, just in accordance with our conversation in the last meeting. Um, so um, everything here should reflect uh, consensus uh, with, with one exception. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll see that I notated, I said I couldn't find any metrics in these things. And I don't know if that's even true that they don't exist. You have to go a little bit further. Go down a little bit. Oh here. yeah, creating an issue or substantive comment, improving documentation or triaging issues. Yeah, I feel like um, those should be part of the new contributor funnel. I agree. I I I think there is um, creating an issue. There is a metric for that in evolution working group. Um, tell me more about substantive comment. And I think we have a metric in common for counting comments. I have to look. Um. um the idea on a substantive comment i guess it was really any comment like i think when uh, when somebody makes their first comment on an issue it can easily become part of you know becoming part of a project on yeah. a long basis a lifelong record of oh. horrors <laughs> <laughs> not but, uh. And I, we don't have anything for 
triaging issues explicitly or improving documentation, but I, I agree those are really important new contributor funnel activities. Actually, I thought it might be interesting to go do those metrics, and I wanted to ask about what would be involved in introducing new metrics and you know at some future yeah point. i was thinking the same thing so basically you're you're telling you're saying that those three points that you have there are not current chaos metrics but you think they would the be useful one. to be included in the in this metrics model is that correct uh that's right although i'm sean has just pointed out that i'm the, saying the, the last two are clearly not the okay. first one might be Gotcha. I know, okay. I know that we've included in, in these auger community or in these chaos community reports, but I don't know is if it's actually a defined metric. Hmm. I have to check that. So my first thought in terms of how to capture these, um, let's just say like triaging issues. Let's pick that one. Yeah. Um, if we, I'm going to put it in the chat. And I think most people are familiar with this, the spreadsheet. Have you all seen this? Lucas, you're familiar with this, aren't you? Not sure. Oops, I opened the new browser for some reason. This is what you're referring to. Yep. Um, I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this could be a good place to look up metrics. Is that what you're thinking? Well, yeah, and it could also, it could also be a good place to, to plant metrics. Yes. Yeah. Here's an idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of the metrics creation is like, it kind of feels right <laughs> in a particular area or something along those lines. Um, so if we were to, as an example, if we were to pick on triaging of issues, you know, do you think that's a, a metric that, and if you look across the bottom, see where it says common value yeah. evolution, yeah, like this is probably not a, wide triaging wide. is probably not a DEI the, yeah, metric. No. It's, I can yeah, I think, think it, of it, it as a common or uh, evolution, either likewise. of these. Yeah, likewise. Is there a consensus? I found something related to the uh, tra tragic issue. It's about issue label inclusivity. Mm -hmm. Similar like that. It's yeah, that's, DEI working group. Yep, that is a, so it's about label, that's about labeling, like adding that, is it a tag or a label in GitHub? Just to try to the inclusive. Um, provide yeah, provide I mean, better access for folks. Yeah, I mean, I think we've tried to use the good first issue or. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Something, yeah, something like that. Well, let's let's pretend it was an evolution metric triaging. So can you click on that, yep. John? So is it, see, so see like row 14, row 29? Yep. So it's code, it's not a code development activity or code development efficiency or code process quality, but it would be related to issue resolution directly, I think. So why don't so you issue triage? Let's add a row. Add a yeah, row. let's add a row. Uh, oops. Lost my way here. Just do it right in the middle or something. I think you have to add a row off of one that has the, the um, stuff in it already. Yeah. Yeah, like that one. Because then it'll full, pull down, yeah, that thing. So, what this would be considering at this juncture, yeah, let's, at the very start, right? And then, yep, issue triaging, and then maybe in the you could say this. Nope, oh, go back one. So, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, just say like this is a metric proposed from the metrics model working group or something like that. Should we also open an issue in the evolution repo? Yep. Yeah, we could. Yep. I was thinking it might be helpful just to place this link in context. Stop. 
Oh. Yeah. Just made it really ugly. Yeah, I did. I, all... I, did. I succeeded at that. <laughs> <laughs> avert your eyes matt <laughs> it's like going over into the next cell and then it got really big that makes beautiful spreadsheets and i come and ruin them uh, either <laughs> you actually say that but there was one time i know there was one time where i actually like did all the colors were screwed up i don't yep. know what happened <laughs> i helped and then the other one that uh was added was improving documentation um there's a new metric I'm, I'm yeah you can that one probably you fits think under of that as a team i'm gonna add some i think that fits minutes. under common um is it better now i have formatted it like under contributions <laughs> thank you um and so actually so interestingly there is a there is a um a type of contribution metric that I believe, if memory serves, is the kitchen sink of uh, it's the kitchen sink of oh, wah, wah. That spreadsheet's <laughs> broken. Uh, that's are you, no are you speaking of um, types of contributions, maybe? Yeah, there's a th this is a metric. Um, let me find it really quick here. types of contributions. So this is a release metric. And uh, it's, it's in, in uh, intended, I mean, basically, it's not a very, I mean, on, on one level, it I think is intended to cover all of the things that you could possibly do as a contribution to a project. Um, and so documentation authorship is like one of those activities. And so that's why I call it kind of a kitchen sink metric where we've defined this, this discrete set of types of activities. And in theory, each of them could be counted in a repository. Um, Agreed. I, I mean, I think that, that all of these would count as um, kind of new contributor funnel kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, and because this is so broad, it's hard to build on top of it. No, it yeah, it, it is. It's um, it's hard to say that I've implemented this metric, except to say I have a way of counting each of these discrete things. And maybe this maybe this inventory should like I think actually, for example, bug triaging. We just just said that should be its own metric, and I think what we're saying is documentation improving documentation or is another one that we should create as a discrete metric or yeah i was making the issue so oh awesome the other one okay Three and so i think i think where i like there's a nice um if i scroll over so this is readable there's a nice little category called contributions and there's this types of contributions but um, I, th I think this is a place where we could add um, the, um, the second one, the, um, improving documentation. I think that um, just to digress, but briefly, um, I think that this the discovering um, valuable new metrics to create um, is, it kind of fits with the earlier conversation on uh, data visualization and the auger related model um, in terms of the value of the uh, metrics models group. And in a way that this group is about uh, chaos dog fooding its own metrics. And uh, yes, it is. And so it's kind of valuable in that sense. No, and it's it's. I think you've identified two explicit gaps that are ultimately pretty important for the this new contributor funnel model that we've developed. Like these are these are metrics that are absolutely missing. So improving documentation ended up in common. I yeah, 
Judgment That's call. fine. I just I was going to open an issue. It felt like it was a type of contribution, and it didn't really fit in evolution, but but it had a category ready to go in um, common. That's how my brain put it there. So there is, I mean, if you go to DEI. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there is something about documentation. There is. Documentation, so there, discoverability, documentation, accessibility. And usability. Right. So, so these are, so when it comes to improving documentation, we might cross reference uh, these documentation characteristics of usability, discoverability, and accessibility. If we're trying to help new contributors understand what we mean by improving documentation, because it's, or maybe not, maybe that makes it too complex. I don't know. I mean, why, Lucas, do you, do you think that what you're talking about is different than these three? I know you're not going to read them all three right now, yeah. but just based on the titles. I, I, um, I, I wish these seemed closer in spirit. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, the, the need in this context is to know about people who are doing work on documentation, how many people are doing any sort of work on documentation, um, right? You're trying to quantify contributor activity right. on any sort of documentation, regardless of type. Mm -hmm. um, and usability, discoverability, and accessibility would all be orthogonal. Yeah, these are really about the documentation itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They would create, it would be a giant amount of work to process these properties of the existing documentation in order to decide what to change when just making it better and easier to follow is okay. often enough. Okay, that's fair. Thank like you. Th these qualities emerge from improving, I think. Put more simply. So then a question for you, Lucas. I mean, we have about five minutes left. Um, do for like this model that you've put together, I think it's great, you know, notwithstanding the coverage part that you have below, you know, because that created the conversation. Do you want to, do you think about, do you want to move forward with this as a potential contributed model and we just kind of get rid of that coverage thing? You know what I mean? And just we know that it's there. <laughs> we try to record it the best that we can, and we can improve the model over time, kind of like what we do with our metrics. Or do you want to hold, wait for some of the, you get it. I would say that um, I'd leave it up to the consensus of the group. Like I created this as an, you know, to follow up on our conversation about figuring out how to do metrics models by brainstorming them and just trying and seeing what worked. So I think um, it might be valuable just to talk about the format here and what we learned about the format and what worked and what didn't. And if people want to call this cooked enough to use, that's good. But if not, I will not take it personally in any way. It's, you know, it's not really my intention. So we're a very, very receptive group here. and. <laughs> deliver thoughts quite well. I, I think it's great personally. And I, I also um, personally feel like this is good. Like as any model we develop, that'll keep on evolving over the period of time. So at this stage, I really feel it is good. The only thing I have with this, which my a group might tell or think, if we are having a persona here, which was like a kind of a debate we had, Mm. Maybe we yeah. want to keep that persona here, or we want to make a language tweak in that. That's all my suggestion. Otherwise, I really like first glance, it was like, wow, it's a good model that can be implemented in a go. And over the period of time, we can always uh, add more metric or refine the model. So my, I'll make a few comments on this. Um, so I, I kind of at the top, so first of all, dating back maybe six weeks ago, when you said, let's just start building these and see what comes of it, that was spot on because look, we're here we are and we have about, I think three metrics models that are really close to being done. Yeah. 
I think we've learned a lot about kind of how to like how you set that up as community manager. You know what I mean? That phrase, we talked through that last time and I followed the same approach in the models that I did, you know, like as whatever company employee or something like that, you know, whatever it was just to try to place people in the right location. So that was super helpful. Um, I think the second thing that came out of this that we just talked about was metrics that are missing that we may want to feed our dog food was that the feeding our own dog food i don't even eating our own that. dog food no but he was he was like feed, he was going the other way he was uh, like okay. feeding the dog food it was no 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 i i i wish i was that creative but I, <laughs> I, mean, so I think it really helped us in that regard um so i think you were spot on with that if you scroll down a little bit sean i do yeah. i do think the implementation we may want to talk about this just a little bit because in my mind the implementation was like so for example, the DEI event badging program mm -hmm. yeah. is an implementation of the DEI events metrics model. It, right. It's like the thing that there it is in practice. Go right. and then the notebooks are gonna be the implementation of the newcomer thing that we were right. talking about earlier. Like that's a so this is a little bit different than that. I don't know what your thoughts are there. I mean, unlike unlike the DEI and the badging metrics, the metrics that I included here all look to be automatically countable already. So there are things. I'm talking about the implementation should... section, okay. like at the bottom. Like when I did implementation, I just linked to the DEI badging program. I'm just like, I'm like, right. go, go look at that. There it is. Right. And this is a slightly, this is a different angle. I yeah. think the description uh, here is more of a like objective thing or some explanation for a user like who wants to implement that. So maybe mm -hmm. that this can be a part of uh, who, sh who you should care or like maybe objective of this model that mm -hmm. can be that description. I think okay. the, these, I think right. these three are like different pictures of places where the flow is happening in the life cycle of a contributor on a project like it's catching you know how overall contributor growth is happening or not yeah and then how are you doing with new contributors which is a separate set of a uh, separate slicing of the some of the same data and ways i mean it, things that influence success at each stage, I suppose for new contributors, that's easy. You, did you get them to, are they coming back and making a second contribution on, on some rate that's higher than it was before? And overall rate of contributor growth, I think this is where some of those missing metrics like bug, bug triaging um, and documentation improvements, I think they become, I think these are, I don't know, tell me if I'm off here, Lucas, but those are sort of practice based things that will help you know if you have specific problems that might be contributing to a loss of contributors. Yeah. I suddenly remember that uh, June just uh, uh, contributed to one metric called conversion rate. It's kind of like, like rate of con contributor yeah. growth. I wonder, um, is the consensus to rename implementation to objectives of this map of this model? What are people's thoughts on that? We could. I always want to, I want to always make sure that we provide a place where if there is a deployed version of this, we can point people to it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm reading like a, a story we're, we're outline. Out, we're, out, we're getting a, close to out of time, um, or we're out of time. Sean, can you scroll up just a little bit? Yep. So we do have the why you should care. I mean, in, in our metrics, we do have description and objectives. Mm -hmm. We do have two, so maybe maybe to your point, we we kind of have it as a subset of why you should care, or some a, a header in between metrics and the metrics model and why you should care, and then 
we actually have a section called deployment, which is where this thing, or, or maybe, you know, because we say we have this header called why you should care, maybe we can kind of keep it a little bit more fun, like, you know, metrics model living in the world or metrics model in practice, you know what I mean? Like where you can find this model in the wild kind of thing, so. What, what I'm okay. reading is, is I think about what Agava and I are setting out to do with Banad. Mm -hmm. I, what is under here is implementation. These are actually this kernels of design ideas for how to make this model useful. Mm -hmm. Like they're getting it. I mean, I guess they're also objectives, but they're, for me, thinking about the, this model, they actually direct me toward certain ways of presenting information um, that, that's manifest in the model that isn't obvious just by the enumeration of the metrics included in the model. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Like some may actually require more of a process look. Yeah. Than others. So, I mean, in this case, what I'm seeing is useful design guidance mm -hmm. that I wouldn't want to see like boiled down into some broader. I like category. that. I like that header. Of design, design guidance. Design. Yeah. It's a little bit stuffy, but I like it. I mean, it's it's stuffy until you look at one of these metrics models and have to think about how are you going to make it useful. <laughs> and there are no ideas yet in the model. And and what this is, what's great here is that they are. All right, we need to wrap this up. So, okay. um, oh my gosh, so, yeah, I got studio yeah. calls. What's me, that? Just pull out, um, this is uh, this is a gist, and it's marked down, and it can be moved into a, a repo. And whatever is a good form for everybody to use, you can fork okay. it. Okay, that'd be oh. great. Yeah. Um, I don't kind of in time. I'll, I'll in in the interim here. I'll make some comments on this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So and then we'll start with Sean Ragava and Vinod next time. Lucas, thank you for your work. This is we? awesome. Yes. Thank well, you, Lucas. To Yep. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, everybody. Till next time. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. bye, -bye.